Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Turning Pages, the podcast that celebrates African literature. My name is Vuvu Vena. Today we are visiting South Africa in a review of Mohale Mosheko's debut novel, The Yearning. We are of a folklore heritage. We were conceived in the womb of beautiful words, birthed into a captivating world that we've spent eternity trying to name, tell, retell, and paint. Wrapped and cradled in stories, in Tsomi Our words create worlds. They transport, they mirror, they convict, they give lashings and hugs. They create and can never be undone. To hide between the pages of a book is to find pieces of yourself before you even were. Welcome to Turning Pages, the podcast that celebrates African literature from the continent and the diaspora. I'm your host, Vuvu Vena. When I think of Mohale Mashiko, I think intentional representation. Maybe it's in the author's notes of both her books. Something she says that reminds me that she is a lucid writer, aware, intent, and awake. Here's an extract from the start of her debut, The Yearning. My friend Vuyo wrote one chapter and then I would write the next one. That's how we started writing Sweet Valley High fan fiction. Of course, we didn't know there was a name for it back then. We were just obsessed with reading the books and writing our own stories. We had not planned to write Elizabeth and Jessica as racially ambiguous teenage girls who belonged in California, Sweet Valley, but were somehow living in our world, Soweto and Yeovil in Johannesburg. Girls like us didn't belong in books, so we ripped the ones from our books and pasted them through the magic of fan fiction into our pages. Every now and then our favorite singers would show up as love interests, much to the delight of our teenage readers who were our classmates. Many years before I co-wrote racy fan fiction with Vuyo, I was reading Bibi Longstocking, Roald Dahl's books and many others written for children. The school library was a sanctuary when other children became tiresome. Distant lands and children on adventures occupied my days and nights. The distance between me and the children in the books became very apparent when I read my first grown-up book, The Color Purple by Alice Walker. How this book ended up in my possession is one of those details blurred by memory and time. The Color Purple, to my complete surprise, was a book about black people. The only stories about black people I had encountered were panel storyboards made up of photos in the back of Bonner or Pace magazine. The speech bubbles above the photos of young nurses were my guide as I taught myself to read. I didn't know I was looking until I found myself between those letters. Do any of us know we're looking till we see ourselves right there in the pages? All our complicated feelings, barely touched history and quirks coming alive in words. There in the pages, I saw myself in the color purple, sitting alongside Sally, watching the drama unfold, laughing when Mr. is finally left by himself and crying when Sally and Shag finally reunited. Perhaps Voya and I were painfully folding ourselves to fit into the books we loved so much. Nobody was writing about our childhood in apartheid South Africa or about how confusing it was suddenly to discover that you're a sexual being and have no guidance, just urges and questions. The world of black teenagers in South Africa was missing from the literature we had. Yes, later in high school, it would be Titi Dangaremba who would unfold some of the literary corners I had reduced myself into. Miss Simliet, my high school English teacher, introduced our class to nervous conditions. There they were, people I could relate to. My uncle was Zimbabwean. These people occupied the entire novel, and it was about them. The minor details were included too. These young African women were spread out through the pages, revealing their beauty and shadows. Their families were much like the ones I was linked to through neighborhood or blood. Sweet Valley High fan fiction died when Tambo entered my life. It was Ways of Dying by Zeg Smdar that really pushed me to find my voice, as a writer and as a person. The way in which Mdad told the painful, ugly, effortlessly, with compassion and humor, encouraged me to write without fear. I wrote my novel for myself, to be quite honest. It was both therapeutic and entertaining to write those fl- these flawed women without interruption or judgment. It never occurred to me that the story I was writing wouldn't be mine forever. Mohale Moshecho was born in one of South Africa's beloved townships, Soweto, in an area called Mabetla. 
real name Carol Mashiko, she goes by the name Mohale Mashiko when she is writing stories. The award-winning singer-songwriter's stage name is Black Porcelain. As a storyteller, Mohale has an evident interest in the unknown, which she explores with a vivid imagination. A creative with a brilliant mind, and if her Twitter is anything to go by, an incredible heart as well, Mohale's debut novel, The Yearning, was published by Picador Africa, an imprint of Pan Macmillan, South Africa, in 2016. Since then, she has adopted Beyond the River from the original film version into a young adult book. She's also part of the writing team behind the crazy comic book series. In 2018, her second book, a collection of short stories called Intruders, was published she is also one of the contributing writers in Black Tax, Burden or Ubuntu, a collection of essays edited by Nick Mklongo. Muhale is one of the creatives behind Ways Lulu, a fun free book for toddlers that is downloadable or free to read online. Let's start off reading from page six of this book just to give context to what's going to follow in this review. Eventually, your mother stopped crying and we told her exactly what was going to happen. Things she had already heard but was suddenly fearful of. What happened next is something nobody can explain. I knew you were ready to emerge. The room suddenly grew dark. Togo stood by the window and said it was starting to rain. There is no way of knowing this for sure, but I felt the rain hit the ground the same moment you crowned. The stubborn baby turned out to be a girl. Your mother took one look at you and started crying again. You had finally arrived and you were alive, breathing, screaming, humming, and beautiful. I always tell people that you just slipped out with no fuss and nonsense. Your mind was made up and you stepped out with nothing but the past behind you. You look like a queen from an ancient civilization. So regal, so certain. That's why I gave you that name, Marubini. You were a new beginning for us who had lived long lives and needed respite. Marubini is where our past lies, the place of old from where we once came. You emerged and brought us into the future. Togo loved the name and nobody objected to me giving you that name. Jabu wanted his first child to have only one name and that's why we didn't give you a school name too. Muhale starts the story with a telling of Maribuni's birth. The setting is quite airy and mystical, like how it feels when the elder of your family has sat you down to tell you something important. We travel around South Africa a bit in um, The Yearning as the story is set in Soweto, Petersburg, Cape Town, and Stellenbosch, we have been dropped into a season of our main character, Marubini's life. She seems to be struggling with a lot of things, the loss of her father, inexplicable occurrences in her life, and she is just looking for answers. Through it all, we see her surrounded by strong matriarchs. What unfolds is a remembering of something dark and unspeakable from her past. The memory brings great turmoil into her present day life. Secrets are revealed and her life in particular seems to be coming undone. The commentary on tradition and modern day life is so explicit and done in a way only Mohale has a gift for. At its core, this is a love story, not of a romantic kind of love, but a story about how a family can love a child. Mohale has brought our grannies, aunts, mothers and fathers to life in this piece and in her exploration of culture and tradition she has centered her narrative around the african tradition of storytelling for me this immediately made me trust mohale as a writer she put a part of me my granny telling a story in the first few pages of this book suspending all disbelief and sending me home we see a lot of nature trees gardens soil and rain in the story all of which hold great meaning in african stories this is also a story of loss grief, sorrow, and matriarchs who seem to be constantly left behind. Mohale makes strong commentary on the issue of black tax as well as the strange secrecy puts in a parent-child relationship. She also explores intercultural relationships, community, feminism, family, origins, and continuity. The small dynamite is jam-packed with such important themes that are worthy of using to introspect on a personal and societal level. The yearning could ultimately be a story of any black girl living in South Africa. And perhaps regardless of the injustices of our lives, it is a reminder that we are queens from an ancient civilization, so regal and certain. I rated the yearning four out of five stars. 
So much of the story Mohale told was so real, so placeable, so understandable. I love her intention with representation because I saw myself in some of the characters she imagined and if not in the characters themselves in the themes. It brought a level of comfort for me. It's a wonderful thing to be seen. Also something about the way Mohale thinks is a magic on its own. To have thought up the story in this way and relayed it in such a relatable manner is altogether intriguing. If you haven't read this book, I promise her preamble and opening to the actual story will get you is one worthy of the bookshelf. That's all for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to rate and review this podcast. Any engagement on any of my platforms means a lot to me. And until next time, remember, every page turned is something learned. Keep turning pages. I'd love to hear your thoughts about today's episode. So why not search for me on social media? On Instagram, I'm vuvuvena underscore reads. On Facebook and Twitter and YouTube, I'm vuvuvena reads. And you can also find me on my website, which is www.vuvuvenareads.com. And until next week, I really do love you guys. Bye now.